Hey y'all, welcome back to the Gallivant Gingers. Today we're taking a tour of the Lodge Foundry. Don't you just love this mural painted on the side of this building? I'd like this painted on my house. I'm sure my neighbors would love it. So this is a free tour. They do it every year while the Cornbread Festival is going on. So if you are ever here for the festival, don't forget to do the Foundry Tour. I'm not sure if y'all heard that, but they were telling everyone where the restrooms were located, and Steve asked if they had cast iron toilets. I don't know, it seems like that would take an awful lot of seasoning to keep it from rusting. Or maybe they could be enameled cast iron toilets. These are skillets decorated by workers here at Lodge. They all did a really good job, a lot of creativity on display here. There are two foundries here in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. This is the 6th Street Foundry. Now I know some of y'all are saying, what's the big deal? It just looks like a dark old factory. Well think of all the cast iron that has been made here, all the families that have enjoyed meals made in the cast iron from here, and all the memories that were shared around the dinner table. I cannot imagine how hot it must get in this foundry when it is in full operation. And I know it's even worse in the summertime with these hot, humid summers we have in Tennessee. There are videos and employees explaining different processes of the cast iron making as you go through the foundry. Man, do you have to wear all that to work? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> You're going to be just that. I'm going to There is a lot of history here. In 1896, Joseph Lodge started the Blacklock Foundry, and Blacklock was successful at manufacturing a wide range of cast iron products like sad irons, tea kettles, kitchen sinks, and cast iron cookware. And if you don't know what a sad iron is, it's one of those old flat irons that were heated near an open fire or on the stove. And sad is an old English term for solid, so basically a solid iron. In 1910, a fire destroyed the foundry. That didn't stop Joseph Lodge, though. Three months after the fire, he rebuilt the company that we know today as Lodge Cast Iron. This is the oldest and longest running cast iron manufacturer in the United States. This cookware is created through an age-old process called sand molding. 
A mix of molten pig iron, steel, and other ingredients are poured into a mold made of sand. And since sand melts at a higher temperature than iron, the mold holds its shape. And once the cast iron pan or pot has cooled, the sand mold is broken, leaving behind a brand new piece of cast iron cookware. In 2002, Lodge debuted seasoned cast iron cookware, an industry first. Prior to this, cast iron was sold unseasoned. It had a thin layer of wax to prevent it from rusting during storage. The water-soluble wax had to be washed off at home, then the cookware had to be oiled and baked in the oven before it could be used. Now, in the final step of finishing before boxing, Lodge cookware is sprayed with soybean oil and baked at a very high temperature creating a ready-to-use, easy-release surface that gets better with use. This is why it's important to cook in your cast iron because the more you use it, the better it will get. Look at the pineapple Well, that wraps up our tour. Next time, we'll be showing you some video from the Cornbread Festival. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to stay tuned next time as we continue recording history one road trip at a time.